Hello and welcome to Superb Women Sundays at 7. I'm your host, Janet Neal, the founder and queen bee at the Superb Women Incorporated. Very glad that you've joined us tonight. The reason I do these interviews is because I want you to see examples of superb women. I've been so blessed to meet so many superb women, to be introduced to new ones every day. And I want their stories to be told. I want you to get to know them, to be able to see what it is when we talk about being superb, about being comfortable in your own skin. And when you do that, when you take that time to understand what your gifts, your talents are, and then you craft and live your life according to that, oh my goodness, just watch out. The world needs that energy. The world needs that positive energy. The world needs you. And so I hope that by watching these stories of these superb women, you will be inspired and that you will go back and learn what's important to you and then do that. Be first and then do. It's all about the be. I hope you enjoy this segment and look forward to having you come back for even more. Hello and welcome to Superb Woman Sundays at 7. I'm your host, Janet Neal, and I'm here with another superb woman. I'm here with AJ Duke. AJ, welcome. Hi, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm so thrilled to get to know you. So I just met AJ. Now, I was telling her, I get uh, emails all the time from publicists for people who have written books, people who are doing different things, but I have never had one about a songwriter. And here's AJ. And it's not just that AJ is a songwriter and she's just released a, a wonderful song um, that we're going to talk about in a little bit, but it was her message that really spoke to me. Um, let me just read a little bit here about um, something that she wrote. AJ is, in addition to being a songwriter, she's a military wife. And what she wrote was, I wasn't planning to be a military wife. I didn't really know much about it other than what I'd heard from distant relatives. Little did I know that what I would dive headfirst into is the most life-altering, character-building, emotionally trying lifestyle I will probably ever experience. I've learned so much along the way. However, there are three things I think every military wife should know to thrive in this lifestyle. One, know yourself. Two, know others. And three, know your purpose. So do you see why I was drawn to talk to AJ? So yes. And so I am so thrilled that you're here. I want to hear more about this, about how you got to this point in your life. Because I know you started off and you were an event planner and you were not a military wife in the beginning. So how did you go from that lifestyle to where you are today? Um, it's a great question. So as far as military wife, um, you know, I, I met my husband and like many women would say, you just kind of know when, when you know. And so, um, when my husband and I first got together, he had told me, um, by the way, I just enlisted in the military and he was a bit older, so it wasn't even really that expected. He was in college at the time. And, um, like I kind of said in that same article, it definitely was not was that what I was expecting. I was I was not going to be a military wife. <laughs> so, but you love who you love. And it really was a beautiful process. And then being an event planner, it was really interesting. Um, I was very much one of those typical, very A-type personalities. Um, very career focused, very driven. And I'm sure you've talked about this to your viewers, um, my work-life balance was completely off. It was all work and that was it. Yep. And <laughs> yeah, and a lot of things sacrificed. And eventually it's really funny. There was a, um, there's just kind of this wake up call moment. And this was right before my husband and I got together actually. Um, you know, I'm a Christian, so I believe God kind of put everything together, but I had this, this wake up moment where I'm there and I am super successful. I am one of the top people at my company and I felt like I was rotting inside, like everything on paper I had down and I felt horrible. I was sick. I wasn't healthy. I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. Um, so at that point, I honestly, I prayed and I was like, okay, you know what, God, like I'm clearly not getting this right. So, mm -hmm. and so I just, you know, I, I went from there and it was six months later, I met my husband and 
And after that um, is really where learning those things that you mentioned through being a military wife, I really started to discover um, I've been songwriting since I was seven years old. And so I finally just brought that back to the forefront and, and here we are. Wow. Well, I totally can relate to what you just talked about. I know there's a lot of women out there who feel the same way. So let's talk more about the songwriting. So this song that you've just released, tell us the name of it. It's Soldier's Heart. Soldier's Heart. And tell us the story behind it. So the story behind Soldier's Heart is, um, again, as I as I started developing my songwriting, you know, coming into the military, uh, there's a lot of emotional stuff that comes with that. And as most artists, you know, when, when you have that overwhelming emotion, that's usually when your best writing comes. And we had just, I, I started to learn more about these families and these people that it's funny, nobody really talks about or hears that much about we hear the stereotype we hear the label we hear all of that but to actually truly get to know these people's stories Mm. that was the first experience I had and so um and we met a lot of people heroes true true heroes that I I know that their stories will never be told Mm. but they are the people who are literally putting their lives on the line for us Mm. daily and they never get the recognition and they never they just do it because they have that heart to serve. And so all of this and all these stories are, are swimming around in my head and I, I'm sitting there waiting for my husband, husband to get out of PT because we only had one vehicle at the time and base was about 50 minutes away. So we would carpool and I hear this cadence in the background, this ruck march and they're, they're doing this cadence. And that's really where the me- melody came from because oftentimes for a soldier, um, you know, this kind of goes a bit artistic, but I felt like that cadence was also almost like their heartbeat kind of a thing so that's where the idea came from and all of the lyrics just came from the different stories that I had heard from these incredible people and um, that was really my heart behind it was to share that to share and humanize what a soldier really is and to, to see the families and to see the emotion and to see just the reality behind that and what that meant it's beautiful. And I've listened to the song and it is a beautiful song. So awesome. at the end of this, we're going to put up a slide um, so that you too can uh, download that song and hear it for yourself. So talk a little bit more about uh, this being a military wife and mm-hmm. how that played into this whole uh, journey that you're on um, going from, you know, being an event planner and realizing that's not really um it's not you there's something mm-hmm. missing um there and so how did mil- being a military wife get you to that point where you did become more aligned with who you really are well if there is one thing the military is great at it is forcing you to not plan anything so <laughs> yeah <laughs> and oftentimes i think that happens in life i i actually really um you know i've learned to really embrace that now um it is really easy to plan out your life and like I said and you know like you said before you can easily plan out your life and then realize that it just kind of isn't what you wanted and so going into being a military wife I couldn't work the first year I was in Korea Mm -hmm. and for all the married ladies out there learning (laughs) learning to be a wife is hard it is even (laughs) harder when everything else is taken away because you find it as your identity you know, we get so caught up in this society of like, what we do is our identity. And I was an event planner. And so then I moved to Korea and I wasn't working. I was a wife and I had to negotiate what that meant. And it just completely threw me off my axis. And so that was, I thank God my husband is a stubborn man because that's, that's pretty much how we went through that one. Um, so that's essentially how it started. I honestly just got thrown off of my access. I am a planner. I wanted everything planned and the army does just not operate that way. Mm -hmm. And it really forced me to look at what do I really want to do? What is my, to go past my ambition and what society had told me my career goals should be Mm -hmm. and switch into that mindset of what is my purpose Mm -hmm. and what, what am I really, really meant to do here? Um, And that may not fit in the constructs of what society tells you to do. It may not look like, you know, a six figure job. It may, you know, for many, many women that I met, it was 
pouring their heart and soul into these children and helping them through this lifestyle, you know? And so it's really just changing your perspective. And that's kind of how it all started. And that's when I really decided that um, songwriting, it's always been a part of me. It's always been on the back burner, but it brings me joy. And Mm -hmm. taking it not just from just writing songs, but taking it to this thing of sharing people's stories. That's where it really hit me Mm -hmm. is that I'm not meant to just write songs I'm meant to tell people's stories Mm. and stories of hope and stories of perseverance and and encouragement that that's really what um what I guess changed with that one oh that's beautiful that's beautiful so you mentioned one of the shoulds um uh that came up for you you know that that society or uh whomever told you you should your life should look a uh, certain way. And I just have to say, I love what you just said about, um, and I find it so ironic, an event planner not able to plan. Um, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that's it. And that, that, you know, finding the gift in that, in that, um, you know, uh, the forced spontaneity um, and finding the gift in that and finding, as you said, having to go and find your purpose um, rather than following those shoulds. Uh, it's beautiful. So you mentioned one should, what, what else about the shoulds, um, have you learned or are learning to release? Oh, so a lot of it for me was career oriented, you know, being, that's part of why I didn't do songwriting for the longest time. You know, it was, it was a hobby. Um, as you know, artists don't make a ton of money. You can't have a career, you know, it's all those like, you should go to college and you should get this amazing job and get married and have kids. And, you know, that's a whole other one. My husband and I don't have children. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something so important, especially with a female based population out there. Um, there's a lot of pressure behind that. And, Mm -hmm. uh, this is something I've been meaning to write about a lot, but you know, you guys can get to hear it first. (laughs) But, you know, we don't have kids and it's not for lack of trying, but we also, you know, with all the availabilities that are out there, I've had so many people say like, oh, well, you can try the, or you can adopt, or you can do this. And honestly, just accepting and what God's plan is and going with that and simply enjoying my husband, that's where we're at. That's another should, you know, it doesn't even have to be career oriented. That's a big should that I had to let go because especially huge. Yeah, that's huge. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, taking, and I know part of it is also just knowing what your passion is. You know, I had the passion to have children. I was shocked that my sister got all of the, uh, the maternal <laughs> instincts out of the two of us. And it's, you know, I enjoy kids, but it, you know, that just wasn't something, um, that really just resonated deeply. It's something I would enjoy and obviously welcome, but you know, it's just really, there's a different, so that's a big should. And then obviously the career thing, you know, going, going with that and, oh goodness, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, you should be a perfect wife. I resonate so deeply with that. I actually, with your, um, you know, I was reading some of your stuff and one of the things that I, I remember specifically is going up to an aunt of mine when I was a bit younger. And it was when my husband and I were kind of earlier on in our marriage and I asked her, I was like, I feel like I have to be superwoman. I literally use that exact terminology. And I told her, I was like, I don't understand. How do you guys do it? Because I'm I'm working full time. And then there's this like expectation, you know, I want to love and serve him. But then there's these, these expectations that like, I should have the house clean all the time because I'm also kind of, I like being neat. (laughs) Or like, I should have dinner on the table, or maybe I should like make three meals a day, you name it. You know, it's like all of these expectations, even in marriage, we're like, how am I on earth supposed to do this? Right. And my aunt's answer, she just looked at me and said, you know what? You just do it. And I, I love my aunt to death, but that has got to be the worst advice that I ever <laughs> Because it wasn't helpful at all. And it wasn't, it, it didn't solve anything. And it really, um, You know, one of the things that I love about the priorities is taking a place instead of serving or doing anything out of obligation, you know, doing it out of love first and focusing on yourself first and remembering your intention on why you're doing it. Absolutely. It's 
so important. So there's, there's another big one for you. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. And boy, again, I can so relate to that. So, um, oh, I was just thinking as you were talking about the shoulds that, um, here's another little, um, uh, thing that the viewers probably can't tell, but the benefit of you not having children is they live in a tiny house. We so do. JJ right now is in her tiny house and I'm not going to make her show us around, but I can't even imagine how that would work if you had children. So yeah. this adventure you have right now is great the way you mm-hmm. are. And it is. And we kind of planned it out that I don't want to say planned it. But one of the things that I thought about after we got it is that even if even if God decides or whatever, I become pregnant in the next year or so, you know, our house is set up to where I could easily put in a tiny area. And I think that that also goes along with the shoulds. Yeah. Living in a tiny home has been the most free experience ever. And I think that it goes to the point of the you should have a lot of stuff. Right. Um, Bless their hearts. I love my (laughs) friends. I love my mama friends. My sister just had a baby last year. The amount of stuff she has for a child is just unimaginable. Uh, Mm Yep. And so just remembering, I think that there is, there's something to be had with that. You know, the, you should have a lot of stuff. You should have a huge house. You know, we sold our 3000 square foot house and downsized to, to essentially a fifth wheel. And it's, it was the best decision ever. And it's so freeing. We don't have to live in any one spot. Yep. Um, think outside of the box. Yeah, that's right. Really that's great. So who's helped you on your path? Who's helped you get to where you are today? Uh, so many people. <laughs> so many people. Um, my husband has been a big one. He's believed in me. From the beginning, uh, my family has been an amazing support mm-hmm. system. I have many friends. You know, I've, I have family and friends that have actually been pushing me to do this for a very, very long time. And they are now extremely happy that I'm finally doing it. So right. they, they believed in me far before I did, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a, many musicians along the way. You know, um, I also lead worship, you know, in various churches or, you know, as we moved around. Uh-huh worship and so I was on I was on a lot of worship teams and that was amazing is being able to see the different styles of everyone and just kind of learning from that and that's really where I developed um my musicianship I guess you could say Mm -hmm. and also leadership too um PWOC for those that are in the military it's Protestant Women to the Chapel it's a bible study that's on every single military post um those women are amazing they have by far been the ones that have encouraged me more than anyone. Um, so a lot of women who I, I, I always call them the women who have gone before me because yeah. I hate using any other terms. So they um, just mentors, they've all been beautiful, beautiful mentors and um, gosh. Yeah, really. I mean, in the past few years, it's really been PWC and those other military wives and just kind of taking me under their wing and um also people who share their stories, you know, I, I really want to add that in. I had this amazing experience, um, for veterans day. I went and I played soldier's heart for a veterans day event in Northern California. And this gentleman came up to me, no idea who I was by the way. Um, and it's one of those things where he just seemed to automatically know everything that I was going for. And he said, you know, it sounds like you like to tell stories. And I I just really, you know, I want to tell you this story. And he proceeds to tell me just about how him and and these other people, how they feel so forgotten. Mm. And I I have a feeling he might've lost his son. He kept trying to talk about him, but he couldn't kind of get the words out. But everything he said just stuck with me so much. And it's, you know, I can't tell stories without hearing them. And so that that's really been part of what's helped me is people who are brave enough to tell their story. Mm. And that's, it, it takes a lot and it's, but yeah. it's so meaningful, especially when it may help somebody else. Yeah. Well, you tell a story um, on your uh, website about um, the inspiration for you wanting to do this. Uh, so share that with us. The Fayetteville story? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's always... 
I always kind of tear up when I tell that story. So uh, we were in Fayetteville, which is in North Carolina. We were stationed at Fort Bragg. And it was right when I kind of finished Soldier's Heart. And I was playing around with this. Well, you know, maybe maybe I'll share my music. I don't know. It's probably not any good. You know, all of that stuff that you go through. Voices going on and on. Exactly. So, but I did it anyway. So I think that that's that's always good encouragement. (laughs) Just do it anyway. We all have the voices. Yeah. And so I went and I just played on an open mic night. It wasn't anything big. They were doing this recording, uh, this live streaming thing um, before I even knew what that was. <laughs> and so uh, there was a gentleman there who actually recorded me playing Soldier's Heart. And he uh, took it back to a support group that he was a part of. And it was um, a bunch of Vietnam vets. And because Fayetteville is also known as Vietnam, there's a bunch of Vietnam veterans that live there. And this Vietnam vet who I guess had been so closed off and so just guarded and never really participated. And you could tell like he, he, it was just hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, See, I'm going to get emotional every time. Uh, The guy shared this song with him and I guess he just started crying. And so it's, you know, it's emotional, but it's meant to be emotional because it's stuff like that, that it's, that, that was another thing. You know, when you say what switched, that, that was the big thing of what switched for me is seeing that the music and sharing other people's stories through music, through this way can help other people heal, can help them, um, you know, just process and, and grow and whatever that, at that point, it takes it so far beyond you. <laughs> and it's right. like, you, yeah, exactly. so I decided, you know, I, I need to do that. To have more stories like that, I I would do this, you know, 24 hours a day if I needed to. Yeah. It was, so that was, that's really a special story for me. It's very special. And, and um, I actually love that you cry when you talk about that, because my belief is I have, from my own personal experience, that. I know something is is absolutely right and absolutely true when the tears come up. Um, mm-hmm. Just it, there's no holds barred, and um, so you know that 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 is a a story from the absolute heart um, when yeah. you hear that. So thank you. Oh, yeah. um, so gratitude. I you just kind of glow when you talk about things. So I <laughs> have a feeling that gratitude is important to you. Yes. It's everything. And I think a lot of people think about gratitude and they don't. Um, I I have gratitude about everything, mm. truly everything. Um, it's gratitude is a perspective. It's not something that you have. I, there's uh, there's so many trials that you that you can even go through. And it's, you know, the real thing that I learned is how to be grateful, even when, even when things are awful. And the thing to remember, you know, being a military wife, we went through, you know, my husband uh, was in special forces. And so he was gone literally like nine months out of the year. I didn't see my husband. I'd be lucky if, you know, we were able, it's funny, people talk about Skyping a lot. We didn't do that. We could just like text like maybe once a week. Uh, Those are some hard things to go through. And there were some, you know, there were times where other people in our group, like we lost men and and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And there are some really, really hard times and and not negating. I think that everyone goes through super, super hard times. And one of the things to remember in that, this is kind of part of the gratitude is I am so grateful for when I start to go through those struggles, because I remember that just like if you're running a marathon, for example, if you go out, I'm not a runner. I'm sure if I go out and I start training for a marathon today, it is not going to feel good. Right. Nor will it feel good tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably for a week. I mean, who knows? Um, but that's the fact is that you, it's training. And so every single struggle I've been with, and, you know, I, I've been through a lot, a lot through my life. Um, I'm grateful for the lessons that it gave me and it took me a long time to start to be grateful for the lessons in it. You know, it was always like 2020. Right. Hindsight. And so, um, once I learned and started practicing that of how to be grateful and, you know, understand it still sucks. You don't have to feel good to be grateful. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Right. You know, but just starting to see the gratitude and it and see the character building, um, that can happen during it. I think that that, that's just literally how I live my life. At this mm. point. It's just always thinking about 
gratitude and just being grateful to be here and being grateful to walk through these experiences, whether good or bad, then there's, yes, it is going to suck, but gratitude doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to feel fantastic all the time. Yeah. So. Well, I can see that it, 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 it's such a key part, part of your life. Um, and it really has taken you through all of your journeys. Yeah. And that, that's a very good point. It has being, having that mindset has brought me through so many different trials and experiences. It, it just makes a world of difference. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So what's next for you? Oh, what's next? So I'm very excited. I need more stories. I I'm excited because now I get to, you know, obviously we live in our traveling tiny home um we get to travel around a little bit so i'm i'm really excited to travel around a little bit um you know go visit more military families more just people in general and really i'm on a journey to explore and discover Mm. stories of hope you know that that's really where where my mission is 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 to discover those stories of hope and to share them whether it be through storytelling or song or whatever but to share them and inspire people so that's really what i want to do um as far as that part and then hopefully we're kind of um deciding right now on what my next single is going to be so we'll see i might yeah. be something in the spring yeah so i'm excited for that one and then maybe you know a music video for soldier's heart so we have a couple things in you know, in the process, um, that I'm excited about. I'm excited to share uh, my next, my next song too, because it really, I wanted to start with soldier's heart because it was such an important Mm -hmm. way to start. Um, but I enjoy sharing my story as well and sharing these songs and stories. And so I'm excited for the next single, um, whichever one it may be, I'm still kind of playing around with a couple and, um, and like I said, just getting to know people, getting to know people, getting to know their story um, and sharing that with the world and just inspiring hope is, is kind of what I'm looking at. Mm, it's lovely. And are you focusing um, exclusively on military stories or is this anybody with a story of hope? It is anybody with a story of hope. So I started with, and you'll see when my next singles come out, not all of my music is like 100% military based. Mm-hmm. So um you know, I have one that's actually about cancer, about fighting cancer. Okay. And um, that may be the next one. I don't know. I really love that one. Um, you know, I have another one that goes to, um, you know, first responders and military at the same time. It's called Worth Dying For. And it's it's a yeah. great song. And so it really is just any story of hope. Um, I do a lot of work in nonprofit and cancer research and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. so I get a lot of stories from that as well. And mm-hmm. um. So yeah, it's really any story of hope. I just started with the military because that's kind of who I am and I'm mm-hmm. part of sharing my story. So fabulous. Well, you are a superb woman and I am so grateful to have met you because you are the type of person I want other women to see. Um, somebody who has taken the time to understand you know, who she is, who feels comfortable in her own skin now. And, and as a result, is doing amazing things, not the other way around. Absolutely. And you guys can do this too. Yeah. You can can have a tiny home too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you, AJ, so much for being a part of the show today. Absolutely. It was so wonderful. Thank you, Janet. Great. And stick around. Um, At the end of this, you're going to see how to get a hold of AJ. If you've got a story, I'm sure she would love to hear it. Um, So we'll give you the contact information for her. And come back next week when we're going to have another interview with another superb woman. And until then, have a fabulous, superb week. Take care.